Come on, as our hands are lifted like in the days of Moses. Lord, you are bringing victory all across the earth as the tide is turning. Acceleration is taking place. Victories after victories after victories. Lord, you told us 2021 would be the beginning of many victories that we would see in 2022, and we're seeing it. Father, as our hands are lifted up, we thank you that the enemy is defeated. He's already defeated. Jesus, you took away from him the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He is defeated. We thank you as our hands are lifted up over the people, over their lives, over their bodies, over their health, over their finances, over their children, over their marriages, over their lives. It is well. Victory. Thank you, Lord. I feel like there's some people here that you've been having some problems breathing. It's just difficulty. And uh, I want to pray for you. Who, who is that? You would say, you know what? I've been having just, it feels like some difficulty breathing. Would you be so kind and just kind of step out and go that direction? And then we want to pray for you. Just line them up here. We want to lay hands on you. And let's believe God together for you to be healed. Those of you that are watching, where's my phone? I want, Pastor Brenda, could you hand me my phone? I'm going to make a point of contact. I'm going to have you go down and pray for the people. So here's what I want. You know, I like to always have a point of contact. So right here in my phone, as they're coming, you that are watching, this is the point of contact. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it's amazing how a woman who had an issue of blood, Mark chapter 5, for 12 years, the Bible said she grew worse. She even went to the medical field. We believe in the medical field, but even the medical field couldn't help this woman. And so she said something very powerful because the power of God or the anointing of the Holy Spirit can be transmitted. I don't know how that happens, but it happens. And she needed a point of contact. She needed something to connect her faith to. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And all of this issue, all of this 12 years of just struggling and pain, I'll be made whole. It's going to come to an end. And so this is the point of contact. This is what I'm touching Believing God right now for your need to be met Because right now your names are scrolling through the phone. I Believe with all my heart as I'm touching this phone that the power of God is going into your body For you for your loved one when hands are laid upon you in this Line right here. God is going to touch you and I believe that your issues are going to stop I believe whatever the enemy has tried to afflict you with touch you with is going to stop because of the power of God pastor Brenda I want you to come down father as hands are laid upon these people as Brenda prays for these people Lord as I hold in my hand and put it near dear my heart every person that is watching by social media live stream Lord even in the chapel those that are watching and will watch we release that anointing, Lord, that destroys every yoke of bondage, undoes every heavy burden. It lets the oppressed go free. Lord, you are healing your people. We pronounce healing. We pronounce wholeness. We command any issues with breathing, shortness of breath, any lung conditions, allergies. We command it in the authority of Yeshua's name. Come out of the people. We lose healing. We loose your anointing, Lord. Not only by hands being laid upon them, but Lord, hands being laid upon this point of contact. Their issues stop. Virtue, power, not of our own might, not of our own power, but by your spirit, God goes forth and touches every person in the sound of my voice. 
I speak blessing, peace, calmness over your people. And I thank you, Lord, it is well. Come on, just say with me, say, it is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. You know what David said? He said, it's well with my soul. You know why sometimes you got to speak to your soul? Your soul is your mind. Your soul is your will. And your soul is your emotions. And he said, I'm going to bless the, my soul, Psalm 103. I'm going to bless the Lord with my soul. And all that's within me, I will bless his name. Come on, put your emotions, put your will behind and say, my soul is blessed. I bless the Lord with my soul. All that's within me, I bless his name. I loose from my soul anxiety, fretting, fear, worry, depression, anything that I've allowed in my soul that steals my joy, that's affecting my body or my mind, I loose it from my soul. And I bind to my soul righteousness, shalom, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I bind to my soul. <laughs> it is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give him a big shout of praise. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Well, we got lots to do today. So why don't you do this? Why don't you turn around, find somebody, share your name, and then tell them this. I said, I bet you didn't know that there are exactly six months until Christmas. All right? If they didn't know, let them know and greet one another. Amen. You know, my wife was mentioning about youth ministry. Do you know your, your wife was part of our youth ministry years yes, ago? Sir. So it's great to have you Thank and you. her here. Thank we you. love her. Yeah. She yeah. was yeah. so on fire. It hasn't changed. She yes, married sir. great. You did good. Thank you, so anyway, all right. Thank you. Let's give everybody a hand clap just because we can. And uh, all right. Where is Anthony Game Changer? The other Game Changer, Matt, my son, is moving. <laughs> Yeah, Matt, that ought to be interesting. Come on out. So. All right. That's like John, when my son John moves, you know, he, oh my goodness. He, he, we, remember when we helped him move, Brenda? It started snowing. And uh, so John's like, Dad, just grab everything. And, he, you know, John's like grabbing everything and, and uh, trying not to slip. So anyway, that's a different story. But I hate moving, don't you? How many of you like moving? I mean, I like moving if it's, you know, obviously, you know, a new place, but the process of it is no fun. So, well, I've got uh, Game Changer Anthony. How many of our Game Changers were here on Friday? Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. First service. I heard you guys played football. We did. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. That's this is how you know it's a football church. All the ladies <laughs> got competitive, and we started doing some seven-on-seven. Seven. The ladies played yes. football? That's awesome. It was pretty awesome to see. That's really good. And Matt was hitting people upside the head with footballs, and so it was great. Well, okay. Well, I, I'll be there next time for football and for food. Listen, um, those are great shoes. I told you that in the first service. But, you know, I did tell Anthony, we've got to keep praying. And I was a little concerned about it because last week when he came up, you could tell that he had been really praying because he had holes in his knees. But this week, he, come on, Anthony, you got to work them a little bit. I left so, my holy jeans at home. All right, well, he's done a great job. So what we want to talk about just for a few minutes, oh, here's Matt. <laughs> John, you're quiet today. Oh, elaborate on interesting. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. No uh, speak text. Okay, so <laughs> anyway. So I wanted to do this. I want to talk a little bit about um, the ruling that came from the Supreme Court and what God's been saying. And uh, I want to, yeah, I want to encourage those of you that are watching to go back out to the nine o'clock service 
uh, at the time of the greeting, the Lord really spoke something I, I thought very interesting. And of course, uh, join us in Atlanta live. It will not be live streamed. Uh, Atlanta at the Gas, was it Gas South? Gas South, Gas South Arena. And uh, it's going to be a great time with Pastor Gene Bailey. Uh, Lance Walnow, Mario Morello, Dutch Sheets, and I will be there as well. And we're going to have a great time. You're going to join me along with Matt and Sergeant Stuck. You're going to join me too. I have to have him come so he brings the food and, and uh, our other officers. It's great. But um, anyway, I want you to come over here because this is really important. Now, I want you to, to hear very carefully these prophecies. We've got prophecies he's going to tell you. Um, and we're going to prepare those this week that we found all the way back to 2005. That God was really speaking about this nation and to this nation. And I knew something was up uh, back on 9-11 when we met as a church and the Spirit of God began to prophesy. And uh, the Lord told us on that night that, uh, you know, we didn't live stream in those days, but uh, it was really interesting what the Lord was saying as we were documenting what God was prophesying. And the Lord said that we would go to war. And uh, he even named uh, Afghanistan and Iraq uh, he mentioned that he would raise up from the place where the towers fell, he would raise up a president that would bring this nation back on course. Wow. And he talked about more than one term. So I believe that there's things that still need to be played out. Now, here's why I say that. He said, because he said, I will establish a blood right over this land. And I never quite understood, God, what are you talking about a blood right? And then it hit me. I thought, okay, wait a minute. What, what is this blood right, God, that you're, you're speaking about? And, and God was so amazing that through the years, I began to watch him give us clues on what he was getting ready to do. Now, this is very important. When you study scripture and you understand how God looks at things, how God feels about things. You know, uh, I w it was interesting when I was reading the scripture the other day and Jesus went up to a man that had a, a demon. The Bible says that the dumb spirit spoke. Now, everybody that was listening was looking and seeing a man who was speaking and they thought the man was dumb. But those that had a spiritual understanding realized that it was a demon that was speaking through the man and it's why he was acting the way that he was acting. And so I say that because a lot of things have been going on in our nation that really is spirits of darkness that don't have any sense about what they're saying. And Paul was so uh, adamant. He said, you need to pray. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse two. You need to pray for, for that, which is, you know, for wicked and un. Uh, wicked and, what is it, Brenda? Unruly. And wicked and unreasonable men. He said, pray that you be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Now, if you listen to what they're saying, okay, so really, you look, think about how far abortion has come. Okay, Margaret uh, Stringer, Sanger, Sanger, Sanger excuse me, I, uh, I was thinking of something else. Margaret Sanger. Okay, her whole motive was to exterminate the black population. That, that ought to make you so mad. And then how the Democratic Party has used abortion as their platform and used the black populace to convince them that they're on their side. It's, it's absolutely an outrage. I love black people. I love everybody. I do. I absolutely love them. And it makes me, it hurts my heart. My best friend was uh, Bishop Harry Jackson, a black man who's in heaven today. And we talked every day for 16 years. I learned a lot from that man. But here's, here's the thing. So when God looks at something, I know I'm long-winded here, but I'm trying to make a point. You got to put yourself in the heart of God. He's called a father for a reason. He loves children, but, but watch this. If there was anything that made God mad or hurt him through the years, was when Israel would worship false gods. And there was one particular God that would just outrage, false God that would outrage God. It would make him so angry. It was the, uh, the false God Baal. 
and Molech. And under that Baal worship, they would literally take the children and they would sacrifice them to Baal and to Moloch, shedding their blood, killing them as an act of worship. And so the reason why this is so important is because blood and spirit go together. When you were created, okay, life was brought forth. Think about Adam. The Bible says when God created him, he took him out of the very dust of this earth, formed him as a clay man. And then the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 that God breathed into him the breaths of life, plural. So he could operate in the spirit realm and operate in the natural. And so right at that moment when God breathed into that clay man out of the earth, dust, life went into him. And the Bible says in Leviticus 17 that the life of all flesh is in the blood. Amen. So when Adam came to life, blood was flowing through him. Now, that's when he became a living soul. That's when his spirit began to come alive. So the enemy knows that blood and spirit go together. Every time they would sacrifice someone or a child to the devil or to those false false gods and shed their blood, it was giving a natural right and a spiritual right for the enemy, the devil, to do what he wanted to do. He had access. How did he gain access? Through the shedding of innocent blood. So over our nation, why does the enemy want to keep the killing of the innocent? So that he can obtain and maintain a blood right that gives him access in the natural realm over people and an access in the spirit realm to carry out his agenda. Now think about how degrading it is. It started with a few months and then it kept getting more and more. Notice, then it became outside of the womb. When would it stop? Because the enemy was trying to gain more and more foothold and access. Now, if you don't think that getting a blood right established and reestablished is important, why did Jesus have to shed his blood? Why didn't they just suffocate him? Because of one man's sin, we all sin, the Bible says, and fell short of the glory of God. Through Adam, we've all sinned. Every man born into the world is born with polluted blood, according to Ezekiel 16. So Jesus had to shed his blood. And then what was the next thing that happened 50 days later? The Holy Spirit, because blood and spirit go together. What am I saying to you? Now that this has been ruled by a Supreme Court above by the Supreme God, it's going to stop legal access that the enemy has had to do certain things in this nation. A culture of death becomes a culture of life. Are, are you hearing me? It, it, it shifts everything. And it also positions the nation for the glory, which is the spirit. All right, let's read these prophecies. Let's go ahead, Anthony. Let's go. So I want you to take it away, and then we'll just look at a few of them. Good? Amen. I want them to put up the 2016 uh, prophetic word. This word was very interesting to me when the Lord first gave it because I knew in my heart that we better get ready because something significant was about to happen. And uh, God was giving us a clue. And uh, so if they'll put that up, it says, Your Supreme Court will change, for I am the Supreme Judge. And God says, Watch, for I will raise up when there is a vacancy of two. There, there wasn't at that time. When there is a vacancy of two, and then what? Three. So God's putting it on record. There's going to be a second, and then there'll be a third. And he talks about what will happen on the third one. The Spirit of Grace says, There shall be a woman that I will place there at the helm, and this shall be a compassionate woman, says the Lord. And that happened at the third Supreme Court vacancy. And it shall be her compassion for the right for the unborn to live. That shall what? Overturn and topple the laws that have aborted the innocent. I knew it was going to happen. What does a nation look like filled with glory? Now, why does God mention spirit slash glory and the toppling of abortion? 
Blood and spirit go together. God is saying, I want to cover this nation with glory, but I got to get the blood right. Are you hearing me? This is how important this is. Why do you think they're fighting like hell, sounding like hell to keep it? Because they want a different outpouring of a different spirit. They want a culture of death that steals your freedoms. They don't want a culture of life. And God says, can you see it? Can you see it? All right, put the next one up, please. We'll just read these very quickly. And, it, uh, and then it says, um, this is uh, 2018. Righteousness and justice shall be established now, says God. Watch what happens as your courts shift. So he's saying the courts are going to shift. Now, how many of you, and those of you that are watching, if they can get me on camera here, how many of you know the rulings? The Supreme Court ruling was 6-3. There was another ruling they just had, 7-2. And which one was that? The Second Amendment. Then there was an 8-1 that just happened that had to do with voter ID. So we're already seeing it. You haven't seen those kind of numbers. But God prophesied it in 2018. It was coming. He said, when you see ruling 6-3, 7-2, 8 1. What's the next thing? Do not fear. For watch out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Right there, he's given us another clue. The babies who have not had a mouth to be able to speak and to breathe. I have, have I not declared, I've ordained perfect praise to steal the avenger. Their voices have not been in vain. And he's talking about abortion. Those who've never had a chance to speak upon this land. See the connection between God doing something with the children that's going to steal the avenger that has to do with abortion and rulings that preceded it. Amen. He's telling you there's a shift. Amen. All right, let's go on. June 22nd. This was just uh, last Wednesday. That's why you need to come to our Wednesday night services of prayer. It's been pretty powerful. So the Spirit of the Lord prophesied last Wednesday... He says, there's the rising of God. It is the rising of his agenda. And notice he said this before the rulings. Swift victories shall be won right after another through the courts of this land. Have we not seen that? Are you ready for some months of victory? Are you ready to see that the tide is truly turned, says the living God? Now this one is... March 31st, this was 2019. I, this is where I had a vision. I was up on the stage. I, I just said, I, so I said it. Hey, I just saw something, and I explained what I saw. I saw a great celebration coming to this land because of an announcement that will be made concerning Roe versus Wade. There shall be such a great rejoicing that is about to hit this land, but there shall be a backlash of anger. But do you know what the Lord said is going to happen? You have seen a march for women. You've seen a march for men. The Spirit of God says there shall be mothers and fathers that will gather and say, we shall bring our children and we shall march in a place of celebration of what? Amen. A new era. God was saying it's going to happen. Okay, let's go on. This one is uh, May 22nd. Now, pay attention. Anthony pointed this out. Just as things what? Get heat. Has it been heated up? Yes. Did you notice what God said? It's going to be heated. And then what did he say would come? He'll start cooling it down. Have you been enjoying the cooling? Yes. Now, I think there's going to come another flow, and it's going to cool again. Because God's trying to show us something. Now, here's what's significant. Just as things get heated up in your land, watch this. Now, look at where the prophecy was. May 22nd, 2019. Fast forward three years to the exact same month, almost the exact same day. In May of 2022, this was in 2019, it actually got heated. The heat wave began right at the time that the heat wave was announced on the nation. May of 2022, three years from that prophecy, same month, there was the leak on the Supreme Court. Okay? Watch this. Just as things get heated up in your land, there will be a distraction. It would be great if you would have said leak. There will be a distraction that shall be from your Supreme Court. It will bring discussion, fear, fear arguing and bickering because it's about to fall on this nation for the sake of time let's keep going uh there's another one which one is this one uh march was it third 2019 for the enemy has thought 
that through the massacre in the womb, through abortion, that he could stop the destiny for the future generation. But listen to me, says the Lord, the light that is coming. Now, stop right there. What did God prophesy before 2020? We are coming into the decade of difference. If you've been following this ministry, prophesied ahead of time that there would be a plague that would hit the land. Do you remember that? And he also said that uh, the decade would start off harsh and then God would bring us into rest. He also said that the decade would be dedicated to the children. But then he said something very powerful. He said, the enemy wants a revolution of blood. But God says, I shall bring a revolution of light. Which a revolution, the definition is a purposeful overflow, overthrow. God's overthrowing darkness. So now watch. But listen to me, says the Lord, the light. What is that? The revolution of light that is coming is causing a dissatisfaction and outrage. And they will say enough of the murdering of children in this land. Okay. Now this one is March. Uh, this one also is March uh, 3rd. Spirit of God says, I'm moving in the what? In the now. Okay, that's three years ago. What's taking you so long, God? And he's looking at it going, it's now. I'm moving in the now. Now my glory is coming upon this earth. That's why I had to get the blood right. And it is coming fast. I stand now to move and expose, to settle and to what? Unite. And I'm uniting the United States that bears its name, changing your laws, establishing rightness and righteousness on your courts. And you can thank President Donald Trump for that. Whether you like it or not. March 29, 2017. Supreme thing, isn't it? I love how God just, he's got an attitude. I love the Lord's attitude. And uh, there was a prophecy years ago, and I remember giving it. Where the Lord says, I'm going to become a positive irritant in their hinder parts. <laughs> Remember when the Lord said that? And then he starts prophesying about the times when the Philistines, when, when they touched something that was sacred. They touched the, the uh, Ark of the Covenant that contained God's presence. And they, and, they, and they touched it, these Philistines, and God <laughs> allowed them to have hemorrhoids. And they were so just like reprobate. And like we're seeing today, and they began to make an idol out of hemorrhoids. And they called them golden hemorrhoids. Remember that? Or emrods is the scripture. Are you serious? I don't know. Why would you now worship it? Oh, my gosh. So God is being a positive irritant in their hinder parts. By the way, I like what 45's response was regarding the ruling. He said, well, God decided. Yeah. Supreme thing, isn't it? Children in the womb who live, leaping in the womb, shall now leap upon the soils of your land as abortion laws will change, giving them life and a chance to leap. I don't know if there's any more, but anyway, let's give God honor and praise. And um, exciting times. Amen. <laughs> I love God. And we're going to continue to break this down. There's some other ones that are uh, from 2005 going forward. There's there's one interesting one that the Lord said that I want them to pull up at some point is the Lord was talking about one prophecy. He said the children in heaven that were aborted are praying. They've been praying and they're praying for this day. And then God tells them that they're going to have their day. They've had their day. And it's going to, it's going to continue. Listen, these, these, uh, these blue states, which it makes no sense, they're protesting in the blue states. Um, they're going to become purple. You know what purple is? Yeah, it's going to be a bruising. And they're going to kind of try to shift to be moderate. And then eventually they're going to shift red. And, and it's, going to, it's going to shock people what God is doing. That's why there's a whole new era of new faces, new people rising up into different places of power. Praise God. Well, I want to preach to you for the next three hours. If you give me a moment. No, I'm not going to do that. But please, would you grant me the honor of preaching and those of you that are watching just a few minutes where we've been talking about praying in tongues. And I want to talk about how two things, praying in tongues is a weapon, but also God is testing us. And I want to prove this to you now. Keep in mind in every church service, according to Paul in his writings in 1 Corinthians 14, you have in every church service, you have the believers, those who have been saved 
are saved and they pray in tongues. You have in services those who are saved that for whatever reason, they don't pray in tongues. Either they don't believe it, they don't want to, or as Paul says, they haven't learned. Then there are those in every service that Paul calls the unbelievers. And the Bible says that praying in tongues in 1 Corinthians 14 is a sign to them. And that's, you know, people that haven't, you know, accepted Jesus Christ yet. They're unbelievers. So we need to break these down so that we can see the benefits. Because I'm convinced as I give you my closing passage today and those of you that are watching, if you will understand the test that we're in and, and, and if we will just do what God wants us to do, and I'll explain that to you, we will have a tremendous victory in our nation and the nations of the earth. I want you to look at um, what Jesus said in Acts 1, verse 8. And then we're going to go over to Acts 2. And I'm going to go very quickly in these scriptures. If I don't get to everything, you can go back and watch the 9 o'clock. In Acts chapter 2, or Acts chapter 1, excuse me, it says, But you, Jesus speaking, you shall receive dynamite, explosive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, where you'll be my witnesses both in Omaha and Jerusalem and whatever city you live in and in all Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So what would you receive? You would receive power. That's why the enemy doesn't want us praying in tongues. So Acts chapter 2, fast forward. This is right after uh, 50 days after Jesus had died on the cross and he shed his blood. Acts chapter 2 verse 1, the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them, watch this, cloven tongues like a fire. The reason why fire had to appear, John the Baptist said, there's one who's coming after me who I'm not worthy to even tie his shoes, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with what? Fire. You want to have fire for God? You want to be on fire for God? Get filled with the Holy Spirit? increase the amount of praying in tongues but also fire had to settle upon each of them because fire was a sign or a witness throughout scripture when God approved of a blood sacrifice the fire would fall you know why I believe there's coming a fresh Pentecostal outpouring is because of something that has happened with the blood right over the nation it's going to cause the fire of God to intensify it's going to bring judgment against the wicked and it's going to be a glorious outpouring to the righteous. But I want you to look at a verse that I want to make as my pretext today that will help you to see what is really on the heart of God. Three weeks ago as Pentecost Sunday was coming, I was praying and I said, God, speak to my heart, speak to the people. What is it that you would communicate to the people? And the Lord said to me, what would happen, Hank, like on the day of Pentecost, look at verse 4. And it says, And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. And watch this phrase. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit said to me, Hank, what do you think would happen? What do you think the possibilities would be if people who are born again would be filled with the Holy Spirit and all Christians prayed in tongues? What would be the state of the church what would be the state of the cities the nations what would be the state of the believer what would be the state of our politics if everybody began to pray in tongues not only together but also increase the amount of praying in tongues if genesis 11 the bible says that the that the earth was of one language and God had to come down and he said, let us, speaking of the Trinity, he looked at them and their ability to, to build a tower that would ascend up into heaven. And God said, because they're of one language, there will not be anything that will be restrained from them because they speak the same language. Everything is possible. So then God went down. He absolutely scattered their languages so that they couldn't work together. But get, can I tell you what happened on the day of Pentecost? 120. They were all gathered together in one place. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. All speaking the language of heaven. And those in Jerusalem heard them speak in their own language. That was the supernatural sign. Here's my point. 
What would happen if we would all unify? Could we be with the right spirit, different than what was at the Tower of Babel building? We that are of the right spirit, what could we build and accomplish for God in the earth? If we would all just increase praying in tongues and pray in tongues at the same time. So I want to show you that it's a weapon very quickly. The first thing that praying in tongues does, and I'm telling you the truth, it will absolutely protect you and keep you in the spirit of truth. It will absolutely keep you in the right perspective of heaven. I don't listen to the news. I did uh, when the Supreme Court ruling uh, came out on Thursday. I clicked it on. I haven't watched it. I haven't sat down and watched a program. I'm telling you the truth in two years. At least, even before that. And I, after listening to it, I thought, wow, now I know why I don't watch the news. <laughs> but I wanted to hear what they were saying. And the first thing that we have to understand is if you sit there and feed on talk radio and the news and you're continually, listen, they have been lying and lying and lying and lying, creating false narratives, trying to get you to bite on their carrot of false information. That's why they censor those who are speaking truth. Why would you bother in a nation that the Constitution gives you free speech where they need to all of a sudden censor you and then hire people who say that what you're saying uh, has been fact-checked and it's not accurate? Your fact-checking is inaccurate. And that's a fact. So Jesus warns of these days. And I want you to look here in Matthew 24. Oftentimes people quote Matthew 24 and they say, well, in the last days, in the end times, there's going to be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in various places, nations in perplexity. Listen, but they, they forget something that is so important and it's why praying in tongues is such an amazing weapon to keep you in the spirit of truth so that you will not be what Jesus warned. And that's this, you will not be deceived. Watch this. Matthew 24. Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, verse 3, and the disciples come unto him privately saying, Jesus, tell us when these things will be and what sign shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the age. And Jesus answered, said, listen, the first sign, take heed that no fake media or anybody else, a fake election does not deceive you. It's amazing. It's, it's so amazing. You know, you have this leaker on the Supreme Court. Where are they? Is it still on the desk of the DOJ? I mean, this is, this is, this is crazy stuff. See that no man deceives you. Now they don't even want to watch a movie called 2,000 Mules, and I encourage you to watch it if you're questioning if the election was truly stolen or not. Go out and watch it. And then they're talking to, the, to the, the, the DOJ at the time, and he's refusing to watch it. I don't want to watch a movie. Why? Because it's going to make you look bad because you're standing for lies? Come on, what are you afraid of? Take heed, no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name saying, hey, I'm Christ. Or they'll say it's Christian and will deceive many. Verses 4 5, 11, and 24. And can I tell you, four times Jesus said the sign that would be more than any other sign. Verse 4, verse 5, verse 11, and verse 24 was, let no man deceive you. He said deception would be the greatest sign of the end days. And he even said that this deception would lead to many who, who their love would wax cold and they would get easily offended. That's why people are so offended, because you're deceived. If you knew the truth. Now, look at John 16. Now, before you show John 16, look at 1 Corinthians 14. i got to establish this truth. Verse 2. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. This is extremely important regarding tongues. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue, Paul says, doesn't speak unto men. Even though on the day of Pentecost they were not speaking to men. Men heard them. In the spirit, in their own language. That's the difference. They were not, as the Baptists, a lot of them say, oh, they were just speaking to men. No, they weren't. They were speaking unto God in unknown tongues. And God allowed it to be a sign to be interpreted for men to hear. But they weren't speaking to men. Men heard. For he speaks in unknown tongues, speaks not unto men, but who? Unto God. Now watch this. For no man understands him. 
Here's the key. How be in the what? In the spirit. He speaks mysteries. Now, those mysteries are you can't figure them out. That's not the kind of mysteries, okay, that he's talking about. God will download revelation into you. Okay, we'll talk about that another time. I'm not sure I'm going to preach next week being before July 4th, but I'm going to come up with something. But here's the point. How be it in the spirit? Now, why is this important? Because if you pray in tongues, your spirit prays to God in the spirit. Now, why is that important? Look at John 16. Because when you pray in tongues, it protects your perspective. It keeps you in the spirit of truth. That when people say stuff, you know, it's like I, I can read over social media and somebody will say something because I pray in tongues a lot. And I'm, I'm connecting spirit to spirit with God. The Holy Spirit of truth is upon me. I look at stuff on social media and I'm like, ah, that ain't it. Some of you need to do that. That ain't it. Quit arguing. Just it's very simple. That ain't it. When they want you to take your kids to a drag club, that ain't it. When they want to tell you that it's okay for a man and a man to get married and God somehow endorses it, that ain't it. If they want you to be convinced that you can be whatever you want, you want to be a tree, you want to imagine yourself being a dog, you want to dress up with a wig and you're a man and put on a dress that somehow, let's play make-believe dress up that you're a woman. No! 